I'm in my 40s, soon to be 50. And from the age of 20, I was looking for relief from total negativity, self-criticism, criticism of the world, criticism of everything. I hated everyone and everything. And I was very good at proving I'm right and you're wrong. Very intellectually capable of arguing. Um, I wanted to know the nature of reality. Why do I feel so miserable all of the time, even though my life sometimes is quite good conventionally? And in fact, my experience was the better my life was conventionally, the more miserable I felt. Not, that, not always the case, but the reason for that was because if I have everything in place that I was told would make me happy and I'm still not happy, why am I not happy? Now, the problem is that the only approach we have in life is, is to struggle to try and make our experience look a certain way. And if it doesn't look a certain way, then we think we're failing. But more importantly, if we're able to make it look the way we're supposed, it's supposed to be, and we still feel like, you know, empty, life is not so good. Now that's, some, that's quite a revelation to have when you're 21 years old. When your life is going very well, and you feel miserable and empty, like this is all pointless. And so that was the beginning of you know, there must be something more than this. But instead of looking at my conventional approach to life and saying, this approach just doesn't work. You know, I can't only have positive thoughts, emotions and sensations. And I absolutely can't get rid of my negative thoughts, emotions and sensations. So instead of looking at that approach and saying, well, hang on, the approach doesn't work. What we tend to do is we blame ourselves and we blame other people for this. So that's the way humanity deals with themselves individually and collectively. Trying to change thoughts, emotions and circumstances in order to feel comfortable, not really being able to do it. And because of that, we blame ourselves and other people continuously. So it's a world based on blame, judgment and criticism. Now, the motivation for that is just to end suffering. So if somebody is, is uh, emptying a tirade of criticism towards you, that's a response to their own suffering. Now, my, my, my experience of trying to find happiness in life, I've done some really crazy things. You know, we're here in India, there's a myriad of practices we can do. Most of them are based on the assumption that there's something wrong and that we, we need to fix that wrongness. And if we practice whatever it is, it will make our negative data less troublesome and we'll have more positive data. But it's still the same mechanism. I will be, I will be better off when I have more positive data and less negative data. Um, now, there's, there's a huge flaw in that plan that it doesn't work you know, it just, it does not work. You will not be able to only have positive thoughts, emotions and circumstances. You will not be able to modify and get rid of your negative. There are lots of neutral things you don't even think about. But in, in the training yesterday, we were just experimenting with the conventional approach to data and, and how essentially we create our own reality by emphasizing certain data streams. So certain thoughts and emotions we, we, we put above others in importance. So things like um, health, uh, the environment, you know, things like this um, might be something that we think about a lot. And there are other things we don't really pay any attention to. But oh, I, can, I can show you how, in, in a very simple way, we create... Um, the importance of data. So this is just an imaginary experiment, but just, just imagine 
that we have an envelope with a thousand dollars in and if you're wearing green underpants you get that ten thousand dollars now actually I do know what colour underpants I've got on there dark blue so damn that's me that's ruined but do you see what I mean suddenly all of all, all of a sudden something that isn't so important is actually quite important thousand dollars you know here in here at Arundel, that would that would go quite a long way <laughs> so now my point is is that it's obviously not important but then all of a sudden it is important so this swinging wildly from data stream to data stream or just on one data stream now you've probably all had the experience of you know feeling wonderful everything's great walking down the beach in Arundel, and then maybe somebody says something to you or looks at you in the wrong way or the way you don't like or maybe you see somebody that you find very attractive and you go up to speak to them and they don't seem so interested or maybe they even ignore you and then all of a sudden you're in a big funk and then there's just a describing maybe about how other people that you liked ignored you before in your life and maybe you need to lose some weight or get more tanned or be better at yoga um, you know, then, then, then you'll be more popular. Uh, this is how I used to be. It was such a limited uh, place to live from. I have a, a very small set of thoughts, emotions and sensations. And quite frankly, it all related back to wanting a partner, an intimate partner. I can't tell you how miserable my life was. Every morning I would wake up and I... I just didn't want to wake up because if I went back to sleep, it would stop all my depress depressive feelings and thoughts. You know, sleep, it, there's just nothing going on for me. And I, I, so I didn't want to get out of bed because I wanted to go back to sleep. But then immediately upon awaking, I'd be saying in my mind, oh, get out of bed, you lazy fat bastard, go for a run. <laughs> go for a run, you'll be thin. Uh, if you'll get thin, then you'll get a girlfriend, then you'll be happy. Um, the first thing up, upon awaking, and then the next, the other thought would say, oh, no, just go back to sleep. I can't be asked to get up. I can't go running. It's too early. Get up. Go for a run. You said this yesterday. I can't. I can't. I don't want to. But you're fat. You need to be thin. Then you'll get a girlfriend. Then you won't be depressed. But I... I, I uh, and then I, I just always remember. It always used to end on, I'll, go, I'll definitely go for a run tomorrow. <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then just fall back to sleep every morning. And so... You know, I, that's so exhausting. It's so, so exhausting. And then all day long, the same thing is, is I, some of the things I used to do, I, you know, indulging thoughts, indulging thoughts of me being miserable, useless, depressed. And I, I had actually a brilliant life. You know, I, I had great friends. I was working in film and music. It was, you know, conventionally it was great, but I couldn't see any light because of the repetition over and over again of the most base misery that was my experience. You know, it, so we heard in the talk about the ways we, we try to find well-being with thoughts, emotions and sensations, indulging them, thinking about, trying to figure them out, avoiding them or replacing them with nice thoughts. I, I was once in London walking down the street on Oxford Street, very busy street, saw someone I didn't really like, I think I actually owed them money, um, and I, I just walked into a news agent, so I'm avoiding, just avoiding, picked up a magazine, and uh, it was like some sort of spy film, um, pretending to read and then, you know, just seeing if I could see them go past, so then I could go out and um, walk past. And what happened, it was like a film, I, I went, I went like this, and the person was standing there, like, ah, oh, ah. Oh. I was like, hi, 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 so nice to see you, you know, like completely, uh, completely trapped with this person. And, uh, and what had actually happened, I'd picked up a magazine about breastfeeding. <laughs> and it had all these pictures of women feeding their babies and special bras and things like this. And he'd been standing there for quite a while, and I'd been, like, pretending, you know, pretending to read this magazine. Right? And, and, I, and I was so so caught up in my data you know about I don't want to speak to this person I owe them money where are they there are they there are they there but I didn't even I didn't even recognize what was right in front of my face 
that is a, that's, that is insanity. And, and this is how we've been living. So if you, if you want to talk about a cult, normal, so-called normal life is... It's, uh, it's not a nice place to be. And um, the Balance View training is, is, is something that is an invitation for you to test in your experience and to see what you think about the training. If your experience is that this is a cult, then you don't have to come back. I mean, you could say it's the cult of being totally happy all of the time. It's fine by me. I'll paint my ass blue and run around naked if it gave me relief. <laughs> I'd do, I'd, I would do anything to get away from the misery of normal life. And I, did, I, didn't, I didn't do that. But, but um, I, did, I did some crazy things. Like I, you know, I would take drugs, everything. I've taken every drug maybe not some of the modern ones, and I'm not proud of this, but every single drug extensively in order to either have more sensations because I'm so bored or no sensations because I want to get rid of my misery. And as I got into my 30s, that wasn't an option anymore because the hangovers from doing these things were, I mean, beyond frightening. It was just horrific, horrific, horrific. So that wasn't an option. So I switched over to things like yoga, raw food, meditation. <laughs> and, um, and I'm not saying that these things didn't give me relief and didn't make me feel um, lots of energy and, and all of these things, because they did. But I wanted something much, much easier than a, a very devoted practice, you know, where I have to get up early in the morning and practice for many, many hours and really watch what I eat and drink pure water and you know, all of these things. Um, I wanted something that would work when I, I had a slice of chocolate cake or, you know, or I don't behave myself in, in the way I should, which doesn't happen, that never happens anymore. <laughs> um, and so, you know, and it's a beautiful thing to see in yourself, you know, we're really at heart soft, marshmallowy, lovely creatures, you know, lo really loving. But if we only have the tools of blaming, judge, judging and criticising, then that deep love just comes out as, as really quite awful things. Criticism, judgement, violence, anger. And so it was only when I came to the Balance View training, with all of my baggage still, you know, depression, being overweight, not liking myself, depression, anxiety, all of this, that I was given the tools, very simple tools, to test in my experience and just to see if what the trainers were saying could be true in my experience. You know, you don't have to think about what balanced view is. You don't have to think about what the training is. But you do have to be just open to test in your experience what happens when you listen to talks on the internet. You, you can do that whatever you're doing. You know, riding your motorbike, walking on the beach, just half an hour a day. Just see what happens. Maybe get one of the books for free on the internet and, and have a read, you know, a couple of pages every day. See what happens in your own experience. It's all about your experience. It's not about intellectual concepts. It's not about opinions or belief systems. Just test the suggestions and see what happens. This is all we did and this is all we, um, as Balanced View trainers, share. And my experience of testing this training, testing the supports, is that I went from being a totally totally miserable, sarcastic, competitive, argumentative, lonely, to being so full of love and connection and hope and just, it brings tears to my eyes that I could have treated myself in such a horrific way for over f nearly 40 years. When, when you'd never be as cruel to, a, you know, just imagine another human being, the way you treat, yourself. You're your own worst jailer. Really, 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 really terrible. I can only share my own experience, of course, and believe it or not, there are many people who come to Balance View who are perfectly happy. And that's another thing. Happiness, conventional happiness, is not a guarantee of true well-being. There is, there is no well-being 
permanent well-being to be had through conventional experience. Temporary well-being, temporary suffering, one, one after the other, one after the other. So with the question about depression, it's completely normal to, you know, be zippity doo -dah, walking along like Uncle Remus, everything's fine, and then all of a sudden the blackness descends and you're in tears. That was my experience. Now, the depression is, is there to show you there is no depression. And this will become your experience just, just by relying on the Four Mainstays. Just be gentle with yourself. It's such a big thing. You know, it is a really, really horrific black emptiness. This, I was a depressed person for three decades. And I believed that I needed to get rid of this in order to be okay. Through this training, through the simple support systems, short moments of recognizing open intelligence, whenever you remember. I saw right from the beginning that this depression, it was, it was empowering me when I, when I would let it to just recognize open intelligence, just to rest, relax. It wasn't nice and I wanted the depression to go away. So that's a very important thing to emphasize as well. This training doesn't mean that you like fear, depression. You probably have said to yourself at least a hundred times, if I was relying on open intelligence, I wouldn't mind being depressed. That's what I used to say. But eventually the penny drops experientially when you start to just see in a very relaxed way, depression losing its edges and corners. It used to be here for me and here, like a physical pain in my chest. And it just expanded, expanded, expanded. And one day it was just recognized to be open intelligence. It is open intelligence anyway. So this, this um, recognition, it's, it's an experience. It's not an intellectual concept. So if you're, if you're thinking, or oh, how can my anger or depression or fear be inseparable? How do I do this? You don't need to worry about it because this is already the case. So in this training, the nature of reality, an expanse of connection, love, openness and benefit, it's already present. That is the nature of reality. And this is what becomes more and more obvious in our experience. Practically speaking, it just means we feel more relaxed, more open, we have more capacity to be of benefit, more capable, much more energy. And our data is what is going to reveal that to us. So absolutely nothing needs to change in your experience. Having a, a feeling of anxiety, underlying fear, anxiety, that is the residue of a life based on reification. We, f we feel anxiety, fear as the basis because we, we instinctively know, even if it's not intellectual, that that way of life that we've been living, you know, it, it's a bit edgy. We're not safe, we're not secure. The rug can be pulled away at any moment in time. You know, that you, you, you've probably had this experience yourself. You know, a phone call where we, we get a phone call that says, you know, one of our, our loved ones has is, is had a terrible accident or is very sick or has is, is even died. You know, it's like, a, it's like a, an arrow in the heart. But you see, these things are what it means to be a human being. And what we've been doing prior to this, the introduction to this training is trying to avoid the things that are very, very uncomfortable. We don't want them to happen. But what you'll start to see simply by using the supports of the training, so you're welcome to come to the information desk after the meeting and um, we can talk more about um, the free media, the free videos, the free books that you're, you, you're free, to, free to download. We have trainings, um, we have open meetings. And the whole purpose of this is that you, your experience, becomes what we're sharing. The reason I'm so passionate about this is because I found what I was looking for. Well-being, ease, connection. I don't, I don't, I don't want to feel hatred and anger and, and separation from people. You know, I don't want to have violent thoughts. I mean, I still have violent thoughts every now and again, but the difference is they're inseparable from this great openness and love. It's impossible for them to affect my, my actions.